Give me the news with Grad. News with Gino Grad. Breaking viral. Weird crime protest politics. Give me news with Gino Grad. Stuff they saw on TMZ. Joe Biden. Kamala. Beat news with Gina Gino Grad. With Gina Grad. Well, let's start with a couple updates uh, that we hit on a few days ago. Two updates, um, both uh, Nancy Grace had some thoughts about. So remember when we talked about the South Carolina lawyer and this just very odd story of like mm-hmm. his uh, uh, basic, I'll, I'll set it up. Um, so we talked about it, how this man's wife and son were killed a few months ago, and then he, he's 53, Alex Murdoch, was suddenly shot at by a man in a truck, mm-hmm. and he survived. Mm-hmm. Um, so CNN reports that Murdoch arranged for the man to kill him so that his surviving son could collect a life insurance payout of $10 million. Mm. Murdoch admitted to authorities Monday that he had conspired with the man to kill him as part of this suicidal fraud scheme. And the man who shot at him was a 61-year-old man, uh, Curtis Smith, who's been charged with assisted suicide, assault and battery of a high an aggravated nature, pointing and presenting a firearm, insurance fraud, and conspiracy to commit insurance fraud. How often does the murder for hire go according to plan? We wouldn't know. We were talking, point. but you, yeah, would you we like just to hear know? about it when they go yeah, south? Who knows? And you want to know how? How would he have found this random sixty-one-year-old man? You ask. Well, remember, Murdoch was a lawyer, and he had previously represented this guy, totally unrelated. Thought, hey, this guy might want to do me a favor, maybe make some money. Just in case you don't uh, recall the story, and we didn't play this part on the show. I got to say this. It's bad when you have jobs, bad jobs, Mm. murder, Mm. or even like clearing brush. Okay. And you come to mine. Oh. I mean, hey, I bet Ron. (laughs) Who could unclog this toilet? Ron could do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's not, because you you would never, yeah, you don't get a clogged toilet and go, I got to get Kimmel over here. (laughs) Or Dr. Drew. Like, you right. know, these guys are busy. Yeah. They're doing things. They have other talents. You shouldn't come to mind That's when a, it comes to bad jobs or murderous jobs. That is a very good point, something I hope we all learn from. Um, this was Nancy's hot take on just not buying this story and just knowing something was amiss about it. Mm. You She's had clairvoyant. This, this past mm-hmm. weekend where he was apparently shot on the side of the road. Uh, you, you, you were just down in the area. What did you learn? I learned a lot. Uh, yes, I've just gotten back from South Carolina and Savannah. Savannah is critical because the hospital there, Memorial Medical, is where he was airlifted to after being shot in the head on a very rural route. It's off Old Sokahatchee, and it is a two-lane, very narrow. Uh, what concerns me about that is he says... A truck drove by, passed him, you came back, shot him in the head. Now, he lives, he calls 911, this is about 1.30 in the afternoon on Saturday, then he calls his brother shortly after that and he's airlifted to Memorial Medical. I'm very surprised, what, they airlifted him to put a Band-Aid on his head? <laughs> she had a lot of thoughts. God, she just, she looks like she Someone put a plate of shit under her nose, and it's just out of the camera's view. You know what I mean? She just has that looking down. So disgusted. Good. Yes, disgusted. As you generally are when you suspect that your husband <laughs> killed somebody. Yeah, you know, my thing is I cannot muster the same kind of interest or concern that she has for the for the inner family squabbles. Oh, you know she what I loves mean? an inner family squabble. Uh, the scary part is where Damien Football Williams pulls the truck driver out of the truck and smashes right. his head with a center block. I'm like, I get stuck in traffic. I don't want that guy running around on right. the street. But the stuff that involves family. Well, like you say, yeah. Like, you know, it's not a random, like, somebody going and punching somebody in Brooklyn. Like, that could happen to any of us. Those this are is, the scariest. This is for you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, also, an update on the van girl we talked about oh, the other yeah. day. Oh, yeah. So, I don't think this is going to come as a shock to anybody that uh, People Magazine is reporting that the boyfriend, Gabriel, is now a person of interest in her disappearance. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what authorities in Florida have announced now at a press conference. Northport police want to talk to Brian La- Laundry. 
looks like laundry, but have uh, not been able to meet with him about what happened to Gabrielle Petito. The department asked if they could meet with laundry and his parents, but they were told to get a lawyer, contact the lawyer. A police spokesperson said that laundry had been home for 10 days before Petito's parents reported her missing. Taylor said no search warrant has been issued for laundry's home where Brian and Petito, Gabrielle, were living together. Um, She was reported missing on September 11th, and now they have some serious questions for the boyfriend. They're like driving cross country, Instagramming all the way, Mm -hmm. going to all the monuments. Which is like a thing. It's a thing. I I don't, I mean, if if you are going to kill her, you just got to go, well, we went to bed and I woke up and uh, she was gone. And then she may have fallen off the cliff at night or something. Dingo, I don't know. It seems weird to approach it this way. I'll say. Yeah, especially like you document yourself every step of the way. Right. You know what I mean? Like you're leaving a real paper trail, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like Nancy will have more thoughts on that. We'll be able to get into it. <laughs> should have some. It's, yeah. a, it's a blonde who's That's right. missing. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. Um, another uh, piece of news. Do you guys remember the name Allison Mack and no. why you know her? Who kind I, of. I yeah, feel yeah. like Mark said that she's lovely and they might be friends. I don't know. We have to ask him. Yeah, I guess. Yes. Uh, because... She's the former actress that began, she has now began her three year prison sentence earlier this week for involvement in the Nexium oh, cult. The cult. Oh, yes. that. And I feel Recruiting like girls. a long time ago, didn't he say like, oh, she's like, like he knows her somehow. Like I would love, I would love any more information on that because she was on Smallville and she uh, has now arrived at the federal correction facility in Dublin, California. Wasn't that where Lori Loughlin was? Sounds familiar. Makes sense. I think Seems it like they should. Would end up in the same place. Yeah, I think that was it. Um, two weeks before she was supposed to begin her sentence, I guess it wanted to go early, Mac was one of the lead deputies and recruiters for the cult, which disguised itself as a self-help organization. She you was, know who they needed as a recruiter? Hmm. That porn director who walked across yeah. the street. Oh. Like, by the way, <laughs> imagine that. You're on the set with Barry. And you're like, oh, man, our actress who's going to do the double penetration scene is uh, a no-show. And then the director goes, uh, give me 10 minutes. Yeah. I got this. Uh, let me Don't go across up. the street. You'd be like, are you nuts? <laughs> like, we're going to be here for a thousand years. You're never, you know, let's just call a pro. We'll yeah. regather. We'll shoot tomorrow. Like, no, nah, I'm going to go to Barney's in New York. It's if, insane. If you're, interview, if you're interviewing them for any job, sales, whatever, and you're like, what's your qualifications? Well, let me tell you a story. <laughs> tell that story. He's hired. Yeah, hired. five minutes. So she... By and, the way, yeah. also, bat, first off, you know, New York's kind of bohemian in the 70s. But the point is, is you could shoot a porn movie in the 70s and never dream of a world where anyone you knew ever saw no. that or well, cropped up or anything. It was long gone. Yeah. You could just do it. And it's not because of the internet. You couldn't get to the roads that led to the internet. Right. There was no VCR. There was no Nothing. whatever. Yes. Impunity. Yeah. Yep. So if you remember the name of the, you know, fearless leader at the top of the food chain, that was Keith Ranieri. He's been sentenced to 120 years. And uh, she got, uh, I think it's three. I will double check that. But do you remember the, bi- okay, okay. Full disclosure, I watched both documentaries and listened to a podcast about it. But the big thing that came out of it was the branding. And this was the kind of, for lack Literally of a better word. Literally the brand. Yes. They, yeah, show them. The funny thing about the branding, and not ha-ha funny, but all the women, because there was a men's section and a women's section. Simultaneously old and new. Branding. branding. Yes. So you had to get branded on the women's side. They would blindfold you, make you get naked, and then you drop you off at this house blindfolded. You take your blindfold off, everybody's naked, and then you have to get on the table while somebody uses, like, one of those heated cauterizing I'm not irons. a black fraternity. I have no idea. Okay, that's done. why I'm explaining it. So I'm showing you two images because if you look closely, well, at the bottom one, you can kind of see it just looked like some random sy- symbol. At the bottom, it ends up being a K and an R for Keith Ranieri. Look at the top. There's an M and an A for Allison Mack. Because mm-hmm. they were like the oh, top of the food them. chain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So well, it's the same. Yeah, you just flip it. If you depend yeah. on which way you look at it. So, and if you see some pubes next to the branding, there's a reason for that because that's where everyone was uh, branded. Got them right there. Yeah. What the? What year is it? What goes on? <laughs> I, I, uh, in self help groups. <laughs> I am uh, exquisitely naive in many facets of, uh, of, of life. Mm. And people don't think mm-hmm. of me as naive, but I'm always like, who would do that? Mm-hmm. Like, what are they doing? Why would you do that? You know, 
Would you do that to your kids? Or who wants to be involved with this? It all, it feels so counterintuitive yeah. and weird. Or and who were the burgeoning acting career? Was I like, can, oh, that's a good side gig. I can give you some insight on that. Please. And I also watched Lula Rich last night, which is the series about Lula Rowe, which you two would have no reason to know what Lula Rowe is. Mm. Do you? She <gasps> came up with those sweatpants for the fat broads. You do know what Lula Rowe is. That right. passed the stores. <laughs> I wanted 80 bucks for board shorts. <laughs> Fuck that. I know what I'm it's, doing. I got my finger on the pulse. You're absolutely right. It's that mar- multi-level marketing scheme for these buttery soft leggings with those fakakta prints. And it's like, you know. It you, is? Yes. Is but, it Lululemon? No. This is Lula no Rowe? relation. Well, I was just making a joke. Oh, okay. And, um. I love Lulu. Or Lemon. was How dare I? you? Or were you? Um, and so, you know, it's you had to buy in five, ten thousand dollars They send you all these schmatas. You have to offload them. It is, it is MLM. Mm-hmm. So how they do this stuff and end with this Nexium thing is they lure you in saying, like, don't you want to be better? Don't you want to feel better about yourself? Don't you want your career to go in every direction? We know people. We can help you. Great. So you start getting in a little bit more. It's got a little Scientology to it. Indeed, because that's kind of an it's kind of an MLM structure in a way. Or mm-hmm. pyramidy, mm-hmm. but um, then this is where you're locked in and you can't leave. So you get like a girl assigned to you, like I'm your person, and I just think you're amazing and you have all the potential in the world, and I want to be your like sister and help you. And the best way for me to do that because I want you to be accountable to yourself, but you know we're only human, and you might not be able, you might get cold feet, and I don't want you to fail. So we're gonna go in this room, and I think Scientology has been known to do this too maybe where they got the idea. We're going to go to this room and you are going to confess to me all of your darkest secrets Mm. about yourself, about your family. Make them up if you have to. I don't care. I'm recording. Mm. So good luck getting out when they have all this blackmail stuff on you. And then you just keep going Uh, up and up mm. the food chain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish my family had some more dark secrets. (laughs) Uh, One of my dad's valves on his flugelhorn horn was sticky. Is that something? You know these mics are hot. Yeah, it's not what we're you looking work for. With that? We're talking more like, have you injured anyone maliciously? Yeah. Maybe stolen, embezzled. Anything, even anything oh, insanely taboo. When I when I was like ten. Okay. I had an army jacket. Yeah. All right. And it had a deep pockets in okay. the front. I like where this is going. And there was a market called Toppers Uh-oh. in North Hollywood. Okay. And then uh, I went in there and stole several Hershey's Kisses. Is, is that uh, too much? Is, to- you- is Topper still in business? <laughs> no, they they <sighs> built a strip mall there. Yeah, it's not going to. Uh, you got any, literally anything Maybe else? Maybe something more salacious. Anything, you know. You, you, I, uh, <clears throat> a one time stole the uh, mouthpiece from my uh, dad's flugelhorn. Okay. I know a lot of these are kind of flugel based. Mm-hmm. So far, yeah. And I tried using it like a joint holder to smoke a joint out of, but mm-hmm. it, it didn't work. I mean, that's that, cute, uh, I guess. That, oh, would I was you be in prison for something more, like that? Uh, a little more dirty, a Salacious. little more. Old the owed the IRS forty five hundred bucks back when I was thirty. Paid them off. Mm-hmm. But oh, you, you, you don't still owe the forty five hundred? No, no, no. I mean, I had a payment Compound program, interest. and then oh, at some God. point, I mm-hmm. you know, I, I paid them off. I don't think you're really Nexium material. Ooh, just today. Mm. Drove my daughter to school in a bathrobe. Was uh, the bathrobe. Wait, were you naked? It was it exposed? I was wearing or? shorts. What? Oh. But up top, hmm? nothing. Uh, I mean, it's not yeah. what typically looking for. I, I think you might be a better fit at the Church of Scientology. Yeah, I, I, was, told I, I was told I'd get a bran muffin if I came in here. No, 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 no. You get branded. Branded with the muffin? Uh, with a hot poker. Hot butter? No, a hot put like a cauterizing iron, and we we to melt strap the you down. No, we strap you down. I, can I just have the muffin? I, after you get branded, you can have any muffin you want. Oh, I was told I was getting a brand muffin. Sure, let's go with that. Get in the van with me. Okay. okay. Hope it's got no windows. <laughs> so that's oh, and they also made you take naked pictures of yourself and send them to your like you know accountability partner. So mm-hmm. hopefully that gives you some insight. Well, that's just hot. This just in, oh. I just got a little smart news highlight saying the Petito family, that was Gabrielle, who we talked about the van story. 
Petito family says her boyfriend, quote, left Gabby in the wilderness with grizzly bears and wolves while he sits in the comfort of his own home as his daughter is missing. So are they implying that he literally just like said, I got to get out to pee and like took off? We'll find out. I don't know, but I don't know how she was young. He was probably young. Early 20s. Going on a road trip. There's going to be an argument at some point. A spat. There's going to be a spat. You better count on it. People are impulsive. Yes. Good. I, uh, ooh, here's something for your naughty quiz. Uh, <laughs> naughty quiz. <laughs> I once, uh, I once threw a uh, friend of mine, uh, Michelle, out of the car on Mulholland. All right. Uh, Are you going 50 miles an hour? <laughs> Did you stop first? <laughs> it was Saturday night, and my friend Rudy was driving, and Rudy's just a really bad driver. And he was like, he wasn't drunk or anything. He was just driving on Mulholland, mm-hmm. this old car, mm-hmm. and it was like swaying and back and forth. And I was laughing, and Michelle was in the back seat, like screaming, like, slow down. And I was like laughing, come on, Rudy. You know, it was kind of going on a Mulholland run. And she was sliding around in the back seat, and she was screaming so loud. And she kept going, pull over, let me out, pull over, let me out. And at a certain point, I was like, Rudy, pull over, like, let, let her, her out. And uh, that's probably about three, four miles from her house, Saturday night. Did you leave her up there? Oh, yes, we did. Let's I'm talk. a very, uh, I'm a very that. strong believer. And when people go, here's what I want, about the fourth time she screamed, let me out, I said, let her out. Did she ever talk to you again? Yeah. I think so. Wow. She was angry. <laughs> My point was, you were screaming to get I out of the car. It. We pulled over. We 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 uh, adhered to your wishes. Mighty chivalrous. Give me a Newman car. Give me a Newman car. Let's test this out. Let's talk about uh, a couple of reboots and sequels that are coming. We talked about Twins recently. I think it was one of our Rotten Tomatoes movies. Yeah. The beloved Twins with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. 33 years ago it was made. Finally getting a sequel. It's called Triplets. That's great. And guess who the triplet is? Did somebody send me Tracy Morgan and somebody else? It's Tracy Morgan. And Schwarzenegger? And (laughs) DeVito, yes. He's the long lost brother. Now, it was supposed to be Eddie Murphy because apparently, according to Ivan Reitman, um, Eddie Murphy and Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, go way back and were like, oh, Eddie Murphy's like, I got to do this. It's going to be me. But after coming to America, the sequel, apparently Eddie's very busy now. And Ivan Reitman's friends with Tracy Morgan. So they rewrote the part for him and uh, he agreed to do it. The the first twins I never saw because I just announced after <laughs> seeing the trailer, this is so much nonsense. Like I just movie. wasn't wasn't into it. I think it's a kid's movie. Yeah. I don't know. If it was, it's again, it's those movies you see when you're 12 and then you swear by them. But if you saw them for the first time when you're 31, you would not (laughs) swear by them. What is Reitman doing? I was about, I'm just looking because I remembered. What what do you think the last good movie Ivan Reitman directed is? Well, it could have been me and Jimmy's movie. (laughs) He's not been so mean to us, yelling at us in his office. Um, Well, that, that's the whole thing. So. Reitman wrote, so Reitman was doing, you know, he got out of the gates mm-hmm. with that, was it Animal House? Was that, uh, that was Landis, wasn't oh, it? Oh, Landis. Uh, he was in that group yeah, he somewhere. produced uh, Animal House. Something. Yeah, produced Animal House and then Ghostbusters, right? And he yeah. had this big string and then started doing... What was that movie? It wasn't Have a Good Day, but it looked like it oh. was the... It was the smiley they, face with the three eyeballs. Evolution. Evolution. Yeah. Yeah. It's, my point is it's been a while. I if wish you, I'd seen that movie because he was working on that movie while uh, he was tearing our movie to shreds. <laughs> and if I had seen it, I would have been gone like evolution, uh-huh. but I uh, hadn't seen it yet. If you consider Kindergarten Cop a good movie and it's 51% of Rotten Tomatoes, that counts. Otherwise, we're going all the way back to Ghostbusters is the last good movie he made. Yeah. It is unreal, his string of bad movies. What are the last five? Okay, oh, the last five, uh, Draft Day. Uh, mm-hmm. Draft Day, you know, middling, but not good. You mm-hmm. never call it a good movie. Kevin Costner. No Strings Attached, My Super Ex-Girlfriend. That's right. Uh, Evolution, Six Days, Seven Nights. Then yeah. Father's Day, Junior. Well, all I know is... <laughs> He owns the house next to Oprah's house, and 
Montecito? Montecito. Oh. Quite a bit bigger than hers. I have to, you know, correct myself before I get a lot of tweets. He directed Dave, which is actually a good movie, after Kindergarten Cop. So you have to go back to Dave. And then his offices were the house that was above his house, which is like the <laughs> Shaw of Iran's sister's house in Montecito. So and you've been got there. some good... Yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, I I didn't tell this story, but we're talking about the 20th anniversary of 9-11. At some point, when we're hanging around his $75 million house in Montecito, Jimmy and I drove up there to get notes from him on a Mm -hmm. script we're working on. Um, Also, our first story was essentially the 35-year-old virgin, and he was like, no one's going to believe that shit. Get it out of here. Add five years and call me. Right. A few years later, that movie came out. But um, I remember very clearly um, it was just after 9-11 because at some point his wife came out and called all, like, the groundskeepers in because the house has an amphitheater has like a lake and, you know, tennis court and everything, but also has an amphitheater. And uh, literally just called everyone in at lunch, and we did like a moment of silence out on Reitman's patio there for 9-11. So it must have been right right at that time. But also, so I was thinking about it at the time, not that long ago, um, He was giving us a tour of this palatial estate. He was building a full projection room and, uh, you know, movie theater with the projection room and the projections, the projectors were the ones, you know, (laughs) industrial strength, six foot tall, you know, coolers and lenses. And like, you're looking at uh, $750,000 worth of projectors in there. And now you realize it's all just digital and a, thing and a oh. you know get something for 900 bucks and yeah it would be better than yeah. that but i mean this is full sure. mechanical yeah. everything yeah in reitman's defense he's produced some very good movies but as a director it's been a while yeah. and jason didn't jason direct up in the air yeah no, no, i've run produced it yeah, yeah, I love yeah, that yeah. Really movie. thank you for smoking thank you for smoking love that movie. uh the descendants you chuno what descendants alexander paid to say uh, uh, juno. juno yeah you're right you're right wow. yeah and a sweetheart Oh, yeah? Jason Wright. The nice guy? Yeah. Super that's, sweet. That's Super good to friendly, know. Super friendly, nice guy. I like mm-hmm. hearing that. Uh, something. Can I tell you about the uh, something else getting a reboot? Mm-hmm. But a, a twist? Mm. Uh, Peacock has announced that they have cast Bel Air, which is a reboot of The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, but With it is white a, people. Yeah. Yeah, finally. No. Oh. It is a drama, mm. and it's called Bel Air. And the description of the series reads, set in modern day America, Bel Air is a serialized one hour drama analog of the 90s sitcom Fresh Prince of Bel Air that leans into the original premise. Will's complicated journey from the streets of West Philadelphia to the gated mansion of Bel Air with a reimagined vision, Bel Air will dive deeper into the inherent conflicts, emotions and biases that were impossible to fully explore in a 30 minute sitcom format. And my thing is like, do we need it to be attached to the original? Because it's not to be a standalone drama. Yeah. Like if you go, I'm uh, I'm doing uh, I'm rebooting Captain Crunch. This is granola. <laughs> I go, well, just fucking call it granola then, or just make your own cereal. No, no, this is a reboot, but it's not Captain Crunch. Yeah. It's something totally different. Like, it's just easier to sell when you call it a I reboot. I guess it's all of oh, I've heard of that, which is a, yeah. where we're at now. Yeah, sadly. All right, let's bring her home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. I pop a Mentos before I give a guy a blowjob. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. Oh, from uh, Fired from SNL, Shane Gillis, comedian, will be in tomorrow. That oh, should be that should be a fun conversation. Yeah. Barry Sonnenfeld has uh, got a new book out mm-hmm. called uh, Call Your Mother, Memoirs from a Neurotic Filmmaker. It's available now on Amazon. Solana Beach, we're going to be there doing live pods and stand-up. Adam Ray will be with us. It'll be Wednesday, September 22nd. Chicago, Park West, September 24th. Doing stand-up there. Come on out and say hi. Just go to amcrolla.com. Until next time, this is Adam for Barry and Gina and Bald Say it. Mahalo. An actress short, a cum shot behind.